Towering over the Cascade Range, Mount St. Helens stood as a majestic symbol of nature's grandeur. Its snow-capped peak glistened under the sun, a picturesque backdrop to the lush forests and pristine lakes that surrounded its base. A beloved destination for hikers and nature enthusiasts, the mountain held a serene beauty that captivated all who gazed upon it. Its symmetrical cone, often compared to Japan's Mount Fuji, hinted at its volcanic nature. Yet, for over a century, Mount St. Helens lay dormant, its fiery potential hidden beneath a tranquil facade. The indigenous Cowlitz people knew the mountain as Luwala Claw, meaning Smoking Mountain, a testament to its fiery past. However, for most, Mount St. Helens was simply a breathtaking landmark, a gentle giant slumbering peacefully amidst the sprawling wilderness. The forests surrounding Mount St. Helens were a tapestry of towering evergreens, their canopies home to a diverse array of wildlife. Crystal clear rivers and streams fed by melting snow and glacial runoff meandered through the valleys, their waters teeming with fish. Unbeknownst to all, beneath the surface of this idyllic landscape, a cauldron of molten rock was slowly building, pressure mounting with each passing year. On March 16, 1980, Mount St. Helens was shaken by a series of small earthquakes, the first tremors in a symphony of seismic activity. These initial tremors were a clear indication that the slumbering giant was stirring. Scientists, alerted to the mountain's awakening, recorded data pointing towards an impending eruption. As weeks passed, the earthquakes intensified, shaking the ground. Steam vents roared back to life, spewing sulfurous gas. Authorities established a red zone around the volcano, too dangerous for habitation. Residents were forced to evacuate, leaving behind their homes and livelihoods. May 18, 1980, dawned bright and clear, the sun casting long shadows across the landscape. At 8, 32 a.m., a magnitude 5.1 earthquake ripped through the mountain, triggering a chain reaction that would forever alter the face of Mount St. Helens. In an instant, the entire north face of the mountain collapsed in a massive landslide, the largest debris avalanche in recorded history. The landslide, traveling at speeds of up to 150 miles per hour, unleashed the pent-up pressure within the volcano with unimaginable force. What followed was a lateral blast, a sideways explosion of superheated gas and rock that ripped across the landscape at supersonic speeds. The lateral blast flattened forests like matchsticks, its searing heat instantly incinerating everything in its path for miles around. As the lateral blast subsided, a colossal eruption column shot skyward, a towering plume of ash and gas that rose to an altitude of 80,000 feet in less than 15 minutes. The immediate aftermath of the eruption was a scene of unimaginable destruction. A dense cloud of ash resembling a nuclear winter enveloped the region, plunging everything into darkness. Visibility was reduced to zero, the air thick with the smell of sulfur and the gritty taste of ash. The once familiar landscape was transformed into an alien world, a gray wasteland of toppled trees, buried valleys, and choked waterways. The North Fork Tootle River, once a pristine waterway teeming with life, was transformed into a raging torrent of mud, ash, and debris. The mud flows, known as lahars, surged down the mountain slopes, carrying with them everything in their path. The human toll of the eruption was significant, with 57 people losing their lives in the disaster. Nature's Reckoning, Quantifying the Environmental Impact The eruption of Mount St. Helens was an ecological disaster of unprecedented scale in recorded history. Over 230 square miles of the blast zone was completely obliterated, stripped bare of all life. Forests that had stood for centuries were reduced to a wasteland of scorched earth and fallen timber. Lakes and rivers, once teeming with fish, were choked with ash and debris, their ecosystems decimated. The eruption released an estimated 24 megatons of thermal energy, equivalent to 1,600 times the size of the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The impact on wildlife was catastrophic. An estimated 7,000 large animals, including deer, elk and bears, perished in the blast. Countless birds, small mammals and insects were also wiped out, their habitats destroyed in an instant. The once thriving ecosystem was silenced, leaving behind an eerie quiet. In the immediate aftermath of the eruption, the blast zone stood as a silent testament to nature's destructive power. The once vibrant ecosystem lay in ruins, a desolate landscape devoid of life. But even in this seemingly lifeless environment, the tenacious grip of life began to reassert itself. The first signs of life emerged from beneath the ash, where seeds and roots protected from the worst of the blast began to sprout. Plants like fireweed, 
their seeds carried by the wind, found fertile ground in the nutrient-rich ash, their vibrant pink flowers adding a splash of color to the gray landscape. Insects, their larvae buried deep in the soil, emerged to find a world without predators, their populations exploding in the absence of competition. The return of larger animals was a slower process, but gradually, creatures began to venture back into the blast zone. The eruption of Mount St. Helens left an indelible mark on the landscape, transforming the once familiar terrain into a testament to the raw power of nature. The most dramatic change was the formation of a massive crater where the mountain's summit once stood. The horseshoe-shaped crater, over a mile wide and 2,100 feet deep, became a stark reminder of the violence of the eruption. The lateral blast, traveling at speeds of up to 650 miles per hour, stripped trees from their roots and scoured the landscape, leaving behind a vast expanse of downed timber that stretched for miles. The blast zone, a desolate wasteland in the immediate aftermath, gradually began to recover, but the scars of the eruption remained visible for decades. The eruption also triggered massive landslides, sending millions of tons of rock, soil, and debris cascading down the mountain slopes. The eruption of Mount St. Helens had far-reaching economic and social consequences, extending well beyond the immediate blast zone. The timber industry, a cornerstone of the region's economy, suffered a major blow, with an estimated 4 billion board feet of timber lost in the blast. Mills and logging operations were forced to shut down, resulting in widespread job losses and economic hardship. The tourism industry, which had thrived on the mountain's beauty, also ground to a halt. Popular destinations like Spirit Lake and the Johnston Ridge Observatory were buried under tons of debris, while access to the area was restricted due to safety concerns. The loss of tourism revenue had a ripple effect on local businesses, further impacting the region's economy. The eruption also had a profound impact on the lives of those who lived in the shadow of the mountain. The eruption of Mount St. Helens served as a wake-up call for the scientific community, highlighting the importance of volcano monitoring and hazard assessment. In the aftermath of the eruption, scientists from the United States Geological Survey established a sophisticated monitoring network on Mount St. Helens and other Cascade volcanoes. This network, utilizing a variety of instruments, provides real-time data on earthquake activity, ground deformation, gas emissions, and other indicators of volcanic unrest. The eruption also led to the development of new technologies and techniques for studying volcanoes, Scientists used remote sensing data from satellites and aircraft to track the movement of ash plumes, map the extent of the blast zone, and monitor changes in the volcano's shape. These advances in technology have greatly enhanced our ability to understand and predict volcanic hazards. The eruption also highlighted the importance of effective communication between scientists, emergency managers, and the public. The lessons learned from Mount St. Helens have been applied to volcanic eruptions worldwide, helping to save lives and mitigate the impact of these natural disasters. In the years following the eruption, Mount St. Helens became a living laboratory for scientists studying the resilience of nature and the processes of ecological succession. To the amazement of many, life began to reclaim the devastated landscape much faster than anyone had anticipated. Plants, their seeds carried by the wind or buried deep in the soil sprouted through the ash, their vibrant green shoots a testament to the enduring power of life. The first plants to colonize the blast zone were pioneer species such as fireweed, pearly everlasting, and lupine. These hardy plants adapted to harsh conditions thrived in the nutrient-rich ash, adding splashes of color to the otherwise gray landscape. As these pioneer species spread, they helped to stabilize the soil, create microclimates, and pave the way for the return of other plant and animal life. The return of animals to the blast zone followed a similar pattern. Mount St. Helens stands as a testament to nature's power and life's resilience. The landscape has transformed with lush forests, lakes, and abundant wildlife reclaiming the slopes. Forever changed by the 1980 eruption, it remains a place of beauty and a popular destination. The Mount St. Helens National Volcanic Monument protects this unique landscape for future generations. Visitors can witness the power of nature and ongoing ecological recovery. Trails offer stunning views of the crater, lava dome, and surrounding landscape. Mount St. Helens reminds us of the dynamic forces shaping our world. 